A woman is rescued by police service dogs not once, but twice. And when a young boy wanders off into the woods, it's up to two puppies to keep him safe. Hi, I'm Jason McCoy, and welcome to Pet Heroes. A child wandering away from home and becoming lost in the woods, alone, facing frigid temperatures, is a frightening concept. In these desperate situations, dogs can often be the difference between life and death. But what roles do canines play that make them so vital to these lost youngsters' survival? Doug Hawks has been a member of the RCMP since 1989. He's worked with dogs for over 20 years as both a handler working in the field and as a trainer at the Police Dog Training Center in Innisfail. It was during his time as a dog handler that Doug was first introduced to a very special partner, Corey. I first met Corey in 1999. He was such a smart dog. He picked up on things so quickly. He was uh, just a great, great dog, great companion, and uh, always had my back. Together, Corey and Doug work on everything from detecting contraband and explosives, criminal pursuit, and assisting in the search and rescue of missing persons. It's November 23rd. Doug and Corey are working the evening shift when a call comes in. Eileen Simpson, an elderly woman, has gone missing. The Mount Police got a call that a, a lady with dementia had wandered away from a nursing home in Innisfail, and they couldn't find her. She'd been missing since 6.30. Go ahead for three, I can three. They had no idea where she had gone. She was having some disorientation, uh, possibly dementia. In this instance, you're looking at an elderly lady who may be not that strong, and uh, you're working against time. It was quite cool, uh, quite rainy. If a person was outside for any particular period of time, besides being wet, you'd become very hypothermic. Doug meets another officer on the scene. They quickly assess the situation. The other officer will search outside the perimeter, while Doug and Corey begin searching along the interior of the perimeter. Robert Wambold is a member of the Calgary Search and Rescue Team. Even though a lot of times we search the immediate vicinity looking for um, any clues of where they've been, and it's not uncommon even for those that they end up um, showing up outside the area where we're searching, that they've with senior citizens, they don't necessarily look lost. So I searched all the way along in here to the back fence. So we continued searching this, all this area back here. I searched the back end between here and the highway, located nothing. So I decided to come keep on moving south here. The other thing that really concerned me is if a person becomes disoriented. It was only maybe 50, 60 yards away from the highway. My concern was if she walked out onto the highway, possibly wearing dark clothing at all, nobody would have a chance to stop to, to see her. The dog is using the air, the, the wind. His head is up off the ground. He's using, he's air scenting, trying to pick up a human scent. This is where my dog really started alerting and uh, started moving ahead of me and I knew that he was on to something at that time. We always follow our dog and listen to what our dog's telling us. So I, I just followed along behind the dog and the dog took off ahead of me. I rounded the corner of the fence and lo and behold, uh, laying in the ditch was uh, Eileen Simpson. Call an ambulance for you right away, okay? Her cane was beside her. Uh, she may have fallen, and uh, and that's where we found her. We found her laying on her back, with the, clutching her purse, and uh, very, very cold. With her core temperature dangerously low, Eileen is transported by ambulance to hospital in nearby Red Deer, where she is treated for hypothermia. Without Corey, uh, without a dog, um, uh, I, I believe she probably may have perished. By leading Sergeant Hawks to Eileen's location in time, 
Corey was able to save her life. But amazingly, this isn't the first time the RCMP have come to Eileen's rescue. Not long after Eileen's recovery, she receives a visit from Audrey Redmond. She was suffering with dementia, so we showed her a picture of her where she'd been found the first time and a picture of Dale. She said, oh, there's my dog. She just had never, ever forgotten him. Audrey's father, renowned RCMP officer John Nicholson Cossey, better known as Jack, was doing groundbreaking police work in the 1930s with the help of a very special dog. Dale, often considered the very first RCMP police dog, was instrumental in finding Eileen 69 years earlier. In 1935, Sergeant Jack Cossey, a criminal investigator with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police out of Calgary, Alberta, is the first member of the force to utilize dogs to assist in his police work. Dale is Jack's first working dog. And it doesn't take him long to prove himself. It's just after noon on the 17th of August, 1935. Two and a half year old Eileen Simpson wanders away from her parents' farm near the tiny hamlet of Carstairs, Alberta, 70 kilometers north of Calgary. A missing child is, is a very serious incident. The child does not have complete understanding, especially a young child under six, does not necessarily have a complete understanding that they are lost. So, and they don't necessarily recognize the area they're in. So they're gonna have a tendency to continue wandering or get further lost because they're trying to find their way back to where they were. Unable to find their young daughter on their own and becoming increasingly concerned for her safety, the family calls upon the community for help in the search. As daylight fades and the temperature drops, the situation grows more desperate for the Simpsons and their two and a half year old Eileen. This was nightfall, well this was about 11 o'clock at night and they still hadn't any sign of her at all. Two year old Eileen Simpson has wandered away from her family farm and become lost. When her parents and neighbors find no signs of her, they decide to call the RCMP. And Dad got a call at night that a little girl had been lost from a farm just out of Carstairs. And so they thought possibly he and the dog might be some help. After working a full shift, Jack and Dale drive 200 kilometers northeast to Carstairs, hoping to help find Eileen Simpson. Having traveled through the night, Jack and Dale finally arrive at the Simpson farm at dawn on August 18th. By that time, 200 people had gone through the fields and had no luck. And it was raining and it rained all night long and they'd almost given up hope because the little girl was only wearing a light cotton dress. And I don't even know if she had shoes and socks on, but they really lost hope. Her mother gave my dad one of her sweaters so he could get the scent to the dog. Wendy McClellan, a doctor of veterinary medicine, offers her unique perspective on animal behavior. When it comes to sense of smell, humans have 5 million olfactory receptors. Comparatively, dogs have 220 million, which allows them to pick up the, even the faintest scent, making them a vital part of search and rescue. The two and a half year old Eileen Simpson has been alone and at the mercy of the elements for nearly 20 hours. And after nearly two hours of searching, Jack and Dale are still no closer to finding her. They went through fields that other people had already searched. My dad said that uh, it fouled the trail, and so it would make it much more difficult for the dog. Picking up on Eileen's scent proves difficult for Dale. Hope begins to fade as the search wears on, and there are no signs of her. And then they went into a, a field that was brush and then tall grain. And Dale just took off. Dale discovers Eileen, hypothermic, but alive, nearly a day after wandering away from the family farm. 
She's found in a small gully, sheltered from the elements, which likely helped keep her alive throughout the night. Hi, how are you, honey? It was the first time Dale had found a lost child, and my dad wrapped her in his jacket, took her back to the farmhouse. Eileen's parents work quickly to warm her core temperature, and in no time, she's up and walking around. Search and rescue dogs like Dale are trained to substitute a human scent like Eileen's for what they would normally hunt as prey. This allows them to lead an officer directly to the location of the missing person. By the time Dad left an hour or so later, Eileen was awake and cheerful, and her life had been saved. After the rescue, Jack Cossey receives a letter from Eileen's father. Dear sir, I would like very much to get a picture of that dog of yours that found Eileen two weeks ago. And if you have not got a picture of the dog, we would not mind paying to have one, as that dog saved Eileen's life. She came out all right, never had as much as a cold. Sincerely yours, R.J. Simpson. But my dad did have one, and Eileen kept that picture with her all her life. The first rescue of Eileen Simpson plays a major role in convincing RCMP Brass to establish a full-time canine branch. And in 1938, Jack Cossey is put in charge of the first RCMP police dog training school. And he was Dale's handler until Dale's heart started to give out and he retired to our house and he lived with us until he died. Dale was nine years old when he died. It's just beyond belief that, let alone uh, one person is found by a police dog twice in one lifetime, but um, our first police service dog team, uh, Sergeant Causey, and uh, police service dog Dale, uh, fine in her. Um, you know, there's my little niche in, or little mark in history, I guess. In 2007, Audrey Redman attends a ceremony to honor her father, Sergeant Jack Causey, and his partner, Dale, at the RCMP Police Dog Training Center in Innisfail. Also there is the twice saved Eileen Simpson. If it wasn't for, for Jack Causey, um, we would not be here today discussing the things that we're discussing. He's our forefather. My dad felt that the policeman had to be as well trained as the dog if they were to work well together and get all the potential from the dog that they needed. So that was how the Mount of Police started, with dogs. The RCMP police dog program continues to rack up countless arrests and save scores of people, though only one twice in her lifetime. Eileen was a busy girl, <laughs> but they saved her life twice, which was pretty important. Today, the RCMP have over 150 dog teams across Canada, largely due to Jack Cossey's pioneering work with Dale in the 1930s. Oh, I think Dale was a hero. He did so many wonderful things. In my eyes, Corey's a hero. You know, he's my partner, and uh, yeah, he's, 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 he's definitely a hero. Eileen Simpson was incredibly lucky to be saved not once, but twice over the course of her life and played a small role in making canine officers a vital part of the RCMP. Next, we look at the story of Jaylyn Thorpe and two amazing puppies. Catherine Elliott has spent the last four years raising her grandson, Jaylyn, in Halifax County. He's mischievous at times, but he's a very well-behaved child at times. I love him to death, and he's outside. I'm constantly checking him to see where he's at. Dipstick is Jay Lynn's dog. His other puppy, Bootsy, is sadly no longer with the family. Dipstick is probably mixed with ham and beagle, I think. And Bootsy, I don't know what she was mixed with, but she was the prettiest one of them, kind of cream color puppy. On December 5th, 2008, three-year-old Jay Lynn is being looked after by a babysitter. When she goes to check on the baby, 
She makes sure to take Jay Lin with her. But Jay Lin has other ideas. He has slipped out of the house up there through the doggy door. Neighbors glimpse him playing in the yard with Dipstick and Bootsy along with the babysitter's dogs. But within moments, Jay Lin disappears into the woods surrounding the property. Three thirty, four o'clock. I had a phone call. Mom, Daddy, we can't find Jalen. I said, "What do you mean you can't find Jalen? We don't know where he's at." I said, "On my way." If we go for a hike, we know we've got to go out and we got to come back or circle back to where we started. Children don't, when they're that young, don't understand that concept. They're just they're going from point A to point B. They don't think about going back to point A. Stanley Noblin is the sheriff of Halifax County and has been in law enforcement for over 17 years. Uh, before I got the call, I was just leaving the office, heading to my house uh, to sign off duty, and we received a call around 4.30 p.m. Sheriff Noblin arrives on the scene to find Catherine Elliott and Jay Lynn's babysitter distraught and on the verge of panic. After interviewing the babysitter and, and several of the family members, we, we figured that Jalen had just, he had just walked off. Sheriff Noblin's concerns mount as the three older dogs return, but the family is confident that Dipstick and Bootsy are with Jalen. We found out they didn't have quite the relationship with him that the puppies had. So that, uh, that's what kept our hope alive for him. Even if the puppies are with him, Jay Lynn still faces constant dangers. Right, we don't got a lot of time, so I want you guys to huddle up. The terrain was just extremely hilly, very thick woods, lots of creeks, ponds, old mines. It was about as dangerous as you could get, not only for a little child wandering in the dark, but even for the search and rescue crews and the uh, law enforcement officials who were there. Make sure you guys are ready. From the searcher standpoint, darkness makes it harder to find a child because if they're hiding under a tree or they just decided to curl up in some brush, that they're gonna be a lot harder to find than if it's uh, during the day when it's easier to, to look for them. We were going through the woods, you know, hollering his name out, um, you know, just looking everywhere. Because, you know, we didn't know if, you know, if he may have been asleep uh, at the time. So you didn't want to step over top of him and not see him. And at the same time, you, you didn't want to, the, the worst thing happen, you know, he, he not be alive. And, you know, you actually you know, walk right past him because you, you didn't hear any sound, you know, from him. The search and rescue team spend the entire day scouring the woods for Jay Lynn. Worries mount as the sun sets and the temperature drops. Well, as the night went on and it was getting colder and colder, I didn't know whether they would find him alive or not. Dogs, and especially puppies, like to huddle together when they sleep, mostly for warmth, but also for security. So when Jalen and the puppies are stranded in the woods, it's natural for the puppies to huddle around him. As day breaks, tensions run high and no signs of Jay Lynn have been found. Jay Lynn! Jay Lynn! We looked, um, you know, it was, you know, a few hours and stuff had passed. Um, you know, we, you kind of get the feeling that um, you, you just didn't know, you know, if, if you would find him. Jay Lynn! You know, I was hollering his name, and I, and I heard, you know, something holler. And I just took off running, you know, towards that sound. Uh, and I kept hollering for him to holler back at me, you know, so I could just follow the sound, you know, to him. It was an amazing sight to see him standing, the two puppies, you know, by his side. He didn't seem to be, you know, scared or anything. Uh, it was, he just seemed like he went on a little adventure and, you know, the adventure took him a little too far. How are you, you all right? He's here! I got him! <laughs> you okay, look at me. Hey, it's all right, there you go. Jalen is found 
unharmed. Uh, we were all exuberant. We were, we were about as happy as you could imagine that, uh, that we, we believed a miracle had happened. I think having this puppies there, um, you know, played a big part in him actually, you know, surviving. And to me, it was amazing that the puppies, you know, stuck with him. I think they was hero because they stayed with him. And they, when they found Jalen, the puppies was right there with him. It's amazing. For Eileen Simpson, the efforts of a highly trained RCMP dog helped save her life, not once, but twice. Both times, it was the dog's ability to follow a scent that led to her discovery. In the case of Jay Lynn, his two puppies, Bootsy and Dipstick, helped keep him warm throughout the night by huddling together on either side of him while search and rescue teams worked desperately to locate them. Looking back at all that I've 